Yeah, yeah no, I mean, I pay well. Like, people that are with me, they're happy. Like, well, there's one girl who quit her day job. Because it, you know, pays. It pays really well. Yeah, See, this is like my full-time home... job. That's all I do is make VR chat. It's becoming so hyper-realistic to a point where people are making mods and little additions that they can add to their avatars that gives them fully working private parts. So I got something in the mail. This is honestly unreal. I'm like super thankful for each and every one of you guys because without you guys, this would not happen. So thank you. So in this video, my friend and YouTuber, I am Lucid, talked about his true thoughts on VR chat. And the things he says are pretty shocking. VR chat is one of the biggest virtual reality games out there. With over 20,000 people playing the game every single day, it's practically the home of the VR community. People can escape into new, exciting, and sometimes strange worlds and be whoever they want. I like to say it's like dreaming with your eyes open. But what happens when virtual reality becomes your actual reality? For those of you who are unhappy with your lives, VR becomes your happiness and your way of coping. And that's when addiction takes root. I'm hooked. I have people on my friends list. Every time I log on, they're online. Every single time. Like whether it be two in the morning or two in the afternoon, they're always online. They literally live inside of VR chat. Omega Recovery, a mental health service, released an article explaining some of the symptoms of VR gaming addiction, and it's bad. People would stop doing things as simple as cleaning or eating. When researching, we even found some people who put off sleeping to stay in the game. They would isolate themselves from their friends and family, only wanting to talk with people in VR. And lastly, people experience serious issues like depression, anxiety, and increased aggression. The way that people can get addicted to VR chat and games alike is when they're lacking of something that is necessary in their real life and then they use VR chat as an escape from those problems. A YouTuber called Mr. Drew came forward with his own story. After he was introduced to VR by a friend, Drew got himself an Oculus Rift and started playing free demos. And once he finished those, he discovered a new game, VR chat. I soon found myself spending hours upon hours in VR chat, making friends, singing karaoke, watching movies, exploring worlds, playing games. Sadly, it wasn't long before these sessions would spiral out of control, and before Drew knew it, he was hooked. I bought index controllers and vibe trackers, allowing my fingers and entire body to be tracked while in VR. This only fed into my addiction making it harder and harder to leave this weird world I felt pulled into. Soon, Drew started to experience some of the symptoms we talked about. I started to sleep while in VR, only removing the headset to go to work. It was as if the virtual world was my primary reality, as if I was living in this metaverse and only leaving it to keep the body I was plagued with IRL alive. But after two months of recovery, Drew was able to heal and is now able to enjoy VR chat in a healthier way. But there are so many people like Drew who get dangerously hooked on this game. On VR chat, the servers you join are called worlds. And some of these worlds can be gateways to even bigger vices because there's a darker side to VR chat. One that includes staying out late and partying right inside your headset. The VR chat nightlife. The nightlife is the term used for activities available for people at night. This can mean things like bars, nightclubs, and casinos, and can also mean darker things like substance issues and other activities not safe for work. But what if I told you that these things happen on VR chat too? The buried underneath this game filled with silly avatars is a disgusting nightlife. Well, it does, and it's thriving. Every Friday and Saturday night, VR chat worlds like the Void Club were filled with hundreds of users. The Void Club is a nightclub with DJs, a dance floor, and other concerning features. There's like back rooms, there's like secret rooms that you can lock the actual doors on. Sometimes people can, you know, go into a door or into like a room and get freaky with each other inside of the Void Club. And while everyone in the VR chat community has different opinions about the place, there's one thing that seems dangerously common. People drink in the Void Club. And I don't mean virtual drinks. People will drink massive amounts in real life while playing VR chat. People just obviously just get drunk there a lot, they dance there a lot, but you would kind of expect that of like a regular club, but inside of VR chat and instead of human beings, it's anime boys. And this may not sound like a problem, but it might when you realize that VR chat's age rating is 13 and up. Not only do young people feel pressured to join, but it can leave them vulnerable to these party animals and sometimes to Preds. In an interview done by Brand 
Brandon FM, the person he interviewed revealed a group of men who would look for vulnerable girls on VR chat. The kind of women, whether it's in the world they're in or through invites, they don't really ask their age at all. They don't really care about what age they are. Once they had a group of girls, they would start a drinking game with them. One guy would stand in the middle of the group and play a song. Throughout the song, he would raise his hand. And whenever his hand was raised, the girls would have to drink. And this game would go on for a long time because they prepared a list of songs to keep the girls playing. By the time that they were done with all the songs and stuff, they basically have their picking of drunk girls. Sure, this may not be in real life and they can't do anything physical to them, but they could still easily influence them. And sadly, this isn't the only group like this. On VRChat, there are dangerous groups that seek to cause damage. The gangs of VRChat. Before we talk about these insidious gangs, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Incogni. So I'm especially passionate about Incogni because my goal for this channel is to help you guys stay safe online. Chances are your personal information is floating all over the internet. If you try typing your name or your parents' name online, you'd probably find information that you thought was private. Your email, phone number, or your home address. When I searched up my own name, my information was everywhere. Thousands of companies are collecting and selling your personal data without you even knowing it. And you have the right to request that your personal information is deleted. But the problem is, I tried doing this myself manually and it took forever. Incogni takes care of this automatically. They reach out to data brokers for you. After one week, my information was removed from 31 different sites. To get started with Incogni, click the link in the description or go to incogni.com slash visualventure. The first 100 people to use the code visualventure will get 20% off. Okay, honestly, if you guys are serious about keeping your personal information safe online, Incogni will help. Personally, for me, I'm going to use them probably as long as I live. Click the link in the description and use the code VisualVenture to protect yourself right now. Like all online games, there's a toxic side to their communities, but most games don't come close to VR chat. Valorant has salty players, Warzone has kids yelling slurs, but VR chat has gangs. And as silly as that sounds, they can be pretty serious. I'm Lucid gave us an inside look into the minds of these gangs. What a VR chat gang pretty much is, is a group of people that meet online, usually they have issues with their own family in real life, as far as I can tell. So they feel like they have to get that family protection feeling that all us humans innately need and want. So they meet these gangs online in VR chat and uh, they feel like, OK, I'm part of this like bigger group. I feel like I have purpose in this life because of my you know cult that I'm currently in. What these gangs do is take advantage of VR chat's vulnerable systems to crash people's games remotely. I put something into the gun so it would shoot out particles. It crashed the entire world, except everybody but you would just Delete. These gangs believed that they would gain clout for crashing people, but they also did it to silence people who knew about their illegal operations. It turns out that these gangs actually stole people's custom-made avatars and would resell them for an insane amount of money. Like ripping avatars and like reselling them and things like that, oh, thousands of dollars easily. I would say at least 10,000. And I Am Lucid talked about the consequences of messing with these gangs. They all have like a mob mentality group motive where if they don't like somebody or a person doesn't fit into their like beliefs, for an example, they'll get put on something called the KOS list. If they see a user on the KOS list or on site list, they go after them with everything they've got. These gang members would have apps on their PCs to scan thousands of VR chat worlds to see who's in them. Sometimes they would even try to get rid of them permanently through something called a GPU crasher. With a GPU being one of the main components of your PC, you'd be lucky to play Minecraft at 12 FPS without it. This is how it's done. On an avatar, there would be some sort of particle effect or like a mesh crasher and it would have so many particles in it and it would just keep Instead of closing the game like it would do now, it would leave it open. So if you left your game open, it would spin your fan and spin your fan faster and faster and faster until the VRChat developers eventually stepped in and introduced safety settings in an attempt to stop the GPU crashers. But the problem still happens today. Currently, the gangs have seemingly gone underground and no one has heard of them since their peak in 2020. But some still say they stalk the servers searching for new victims. Roleplay. ERP roleplay is exactly what you think it is. For the sake of YouTube, I'm going to be referring to this as roleplay 
or RP. While it's nothing new, it's been in online games for decades and it's one of the main parts of VR chat. In some VR chat worlds, there are private booths people can go to, fully equipped with beds, soundproof walls, and a lock system to keep people from seeing what goes on behind closed doors. People even use full body tracking specifically for this purpose. It's becoming so hyper-realistic to a point where people are making mods and little additions that they can add to their avatars that gives them fully working private parts. But what makes this especially bad is once again, the young people playing. A study from 2019 shows that 51% of 11 to 13 year olds have seen content of that nature online. But VRChat takes it to another level. Not only are there VRChat worlds made for this, but also avatars designed with RP in mind. These kinds of avatars are not allowed on public servers like the Void Club, but yet so many VRChat worlds have it. To show you just how much inappropriateness there is, we sent our scriptwriter CJ into VRChat and these were his findings. There's some worlds we found that were so graphic we can't show them to you guys. One world was centered around a certain niche. When you entered, it stated that you had to be 18 or older. On the surface, the world seemed pretty normal. It had chairs, a couch, and a TV screen, but there were four private rooms. Each room had a restraining device in the middle of it, and on the table beside it were different tools. What disturbed us the most was that these restraints came in different sizes, and not all of them were adult size. So I'm Lucid, and myself included, believe that this role-playing epidemic could be the future, and there's a huge problem that comes with that. They get this hyper-realistic expectation of their partner looking a certain way, acting a certain way, and especially in VR chat, when you have a full working body identical to real life, nobody in real life can mimic that exact visual appearance that the VR chat anime girl that was made in Blender and Unity will uh, ever come close to a real human being. And while we can't stop the creators of these RP games, we can do our part and encourage our friends not to join in. The story of Tech Gangster. There are so many preds on VR chat, but there's one who was so infamous that his name alone would make people furious. I know Tech Gangster is a very well known file around these parts at least. I literally know 30 women who had encounter with this one Guy. The clip you just saw came from the YouTuber Quits. Quits's brother was harassed by tech gangsters, so Quits went on a mission to find tech himself. He went to different VR chat worlds to ask people about tech, and clearly they don't like him too much. But who is this guy, and what did he do? Tech's real name is actually Brent, and he took advantage of countless women across VR chat. Quits interviewed two key people from Brett's life, his former friend and his ex-girlfriend. During the interview with his former friend, who we'll call Megan, Quits found some sickening details about how he played VR chat. His surroundings, he always had little children around him. He would be such a bad influence on them. Brent would also let his anger get in the way and would verbally lash out at Megan. The next interview with Brent's ex-girlfriend revealed the dark truth about living with him in real life. She said that he would do things like dump her food, throw stuff, pour liquid on her couch, and much more that we can't talk about over here. Thankfully, she's safe from him now, and I hope she's doing okay. As for Brent, no one truly knows what happened to him. Some say he still visits VR chat, but I just hope people know to stay away. But if you thought Tech Gangster was bad, he's just the tip of the iceberg, because this next person took advantage of people and made an organized business out of it. The Adult Business on May 19th, 2022, a VR chat YouTuber named Verum exposed the secret crimes of the user Maze VSF. It turns out that Maze ran an adult video business centered around VR chat. This gave him quite the reputation with the community and not a good one. He was placed on multiple KOS lists and has been banned from the game over 26 times. You might think that people hated him because of his business, but that's only part of the reason. People truly hated him because of his methods of finding models for his videos. Maze would log on to servers and search for vulnerable female users, then manipulate them with his lies and charm to make them want to join the business. Yeah, no, I mean, I pay well. Like, people that are with me, they're happy. Like, there's one girl who quit her day job because it, you know, pays. It pays really well. Yeah, this See, is like my full-time home... job. That's all I do is make VR chat. Once they're interested, he would ask pictures of their IDs, passports, driver's licenses, and anything to confirm they're adults. But that's not why he asked for their identification. He asked because once the girls sent their personal information over, they had fallen into Maze's trap. He can use it against them. He would also use other techniques to make girls feel a sense of security. He would say things to make them feel special. Why do you think I ran up to you? Why do you think it was you who I went up to? You're beautiful. 
for who you are. He would also make these girls believe that he was in love with them and engaged in relationships with them. And in the real world, these are the same methods that criminals use to lure women into. During these relationships, Mays would secretly record their RP sessions and would make the girls send him pictures of themselves. And not just pictures in VR chat, but actual pictures of themselves in real life. So that when they realized Mays was exploiting them, Mays could blackmail them into silence. Because I'm telling this right now, if I smell you, if I can smell you near any of my friends or any of my patrons. If I can hear your name, I'm gonna make you regret ever crossing me. It really makes you wonder what kind of man would do this? Well, the same man who would engage in multiple relationships while being married himself. The same man who was also a father of two children. Mays had no shame and was even proud of his manipulation skills. If I manipulate someone into doing what's better for them, so if, if you're not doing the job, I'll A, kick your ass out, or B, you'll get manipulated into doing what you should be doing in the first place. But little did Mays know that Verum was on his trail and recorded everything. And Mays finally got what was coming to him. Just a few days after Verum uploaded the video, he released an update on the 23rd of May. Verum's video led to a virtual witch hunt to chase Maze off VR chat, shut down his company, and rescue the girls. Maze was left powerless and came crawling to Verum, begging for mercy. Please, please delete, please let me die. You win, you've won, you've accomplished your goal. I am not joking. You are not ever gonna hear from me again. The rest of your life, you will go on. You might think of me some time to time, and you can feel victorious because you were. Goodbye. I hope Mays faces the justice he deserves and the girls find the peace they need. But this happy ending is a rare one, believe me. Most stories don't end like this because sometimes these people cross the bridge from virtual reality to reality. A mother's worst fear. What's a childhood fear you remember the most? Maybe it was the thought of what lurks under your bed? Or was it a fear of something hiding in your closet? Well, one day, that fear came true for someone. In 2020, a mother heard strange noises coming from her daughter's bedroom. Her daughter has been acting strange for the last month. She was secretive, anxious, and was spending more time in her room than with her family. And these noises were the last straw. The mother stormed into her daughter's room and heard shuffling in her closet. She flung the closet it open. She screamed. Standing in the closet was a man covering himself up in her daughter's clothing. The man was JR and he was living in a girl's closet for over a month and they met on VR chat. The girl was using a fake account on VR chat and told JR that she was an adult. After some time, JR drove all the way from Louisiana to Spring Hill to meet her, which is an eight hour drive. JR then convinced this girl to let him stay in her house and hide in the closet whenever someone was home. This went on for over a month before he was found and arrested. The public world on VR chat can be a direct line to vulnerable young people who fall prey to these monsters. There's still one more to talk about, and this person created a cult filled with young people. The Imposter. In August of 2022, Brandon FM exposed a cult operating on VR chat. It was called the Dark Guild and was run by Alyssa Afton. On the surface, the guild was a large Discord server that held virtual meetings through VRChat. Alyssa welcomed people of all ages to hang out and chat in a friendly environment, but Alyssa's true intentions were far more evil. The guild wanted to start operations where they would nap criminals like dealers, bank robbers, and such. Alyssa was encouraging young people to engage in criminal activity and used her reputation to encourage her guild to do what she says. I don't really care about my guild, so I know you might be scared to kill an actual person. It's up to you, but I know for a f at least I'm doing it again. <laughs> it's too fun. Alyssa claimed that she ended five people. Whether this is true or not, it didn't matter. It terrified the other members, which is exactly what Alyssa wanted. And this leads to what we believe is the real purpose of the Dark Guild, to gather these young people for Alyssa's own desires. Alyssa engaged in multiple relationships with young people in her guild. Age doesn't matter. He's the same age. And I'm dating him. He's, he's how old? He's... See? 
This audio was secretly recorded by Brandon when he went undercover as a teenager to find information about Alyssa. At that time, Alyssa was not only dating that boy, but also married to another person virtually on VR chat. Someone who was attending summer school at the time. During that same recording, Alyssa tried to role play with Brandon, even though he said he was too young. It depends, are you up or anything? You mean like ELP? Yeah. Alyssa did this with so many people in her guild and some were affected mentally. The mental scars this whole experience has put on my mind are so extreme that I was recently diagnosed with Stockholm Syndrome. Thankfully, Brandon managed to shut down the entire server. The Dark Guild was disbanded and Alyssa's powers were gone, right? Well, this is where the story should end, but sadly, Alyssa is still out there. But Alyssa's name tells us a lot. Alyssa Afton. The name Afton is a reference to the series Five Nights at Freddy's, after the character ended the lives of five people. So when she claimed to have done the same, it's clearly a lie. She's nothing more than an imposter. People will still go on VR chat, and that's okay, right? Because my goal is not to get you guys off any platform, but to be aware of the platform. So how do you stay safe? The best way to stay safe on VR chat would definitely have to be to have moral grounding as a human being. So first figure out who you are, what you stand for, and stand firmly on it, and then you can enter VR chat. Because only then you will have a positive experience in the game and it won't actually ruin you as, as a person. Because it, it does feel like you're playing tug of war with the devil sometimes on that game where everyone's getting drunk and all these avatars are getting the, all the clubs and all of the above. But if you have a good standing, before you press run on the exe file, you're going to be okay. Matter of fact, it might even be a positive game for you to play. Doing research on VRChat felt different. It was unlike any other platform we covered because the other platforms were in the palm of your hands. But virtual reality makes you feel like you're living in another world. When people escape reality to go to VRChat, it truly becomes their reality. Like I said, it's like dreaming with your eyes open. Just a few years back, virtual reality was a dream of science fiction, but the internet was also once a dream. And so were computers and smartphones. The future is coming. And my request to you is to spread this message so that we can be prepared once the future is here. Visual Venture. Nearly every single person that I've met in VRChat has no objective morality. So everything that they do and say that they think is right versus wrong either comes from the laws of the land that they live in or from their own hedonistic pleasures. There's obviously many, many flaws with this type of thinking. And that's the majority of the school of thought of people inside of VRChat. Nearly every single person uh, lives by that religion. Wow. It's completely flawed because just as the person who would think that, if you ask them, you're like, hey, are you depressed? Dude, they're going to say yes. Yeah, right? they're going to it, say yes. It doesn't yeah, yeah. make any sense. I don't think they really have like the, the ability to like understand like that is what's causing their unhappiness. Right? Like trying like like trying to chase happiness is the specific thing exactly. that's leading them away from it. One hundred percent exactly what you just said. Yeah, them chasing happiness and solely happiness is the reason that they'll never find it. Wait, before you go, click this playlist right here to watch more dark internet documentaries because the algorithm needs to know that you guys watch all of my videos. If you're a talented script writer or video editor and wanna join my team, click the link in the description to apply. I love you all. Peace.